Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Hungary in Civilization VI. The crabs and Caesar are online, so I think I would like to get those horses online because I can be able to sell those horses to the AI for gold. Pop down a pasture on these horses. That'll give us the boost for horseback riding. Very, very nice. 300 gold in the bank this early into the game is a very nice position to be in. I'm not sure what I want to buy. Are there any luxuries and stuff like that that I could improve? I mean, I guess in theory I could improve some of the tiles in my capital. I could get some chops out here. Uh, actually, that seems like a pretty good idea to do a little bit of chopping in here. Maybe I'll chop this and this and put some mines on those tiles. I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. I very much so like that idea. Games and recreation has been finished, finished being researched. I kind of want to get up towards feudalism, so I'm going to pick up defensive tactics to make my way in that direction. Archery is finished, and I think I'm going to pick up bronze working just for the chance to maybe get iron to be able to sell to the AI as well. Time to improve the silver. Brilliant. That is going to give me a gold generating tile as well as another luxury and I could sell these luxuries if I wanted to and I'm kind of tempted to do so because they could be worth only four gold from him. I tell you what I'll wait until the next era and then maybe I'll sell off my luxuries. Mutual open borders with Korea. She'll ask for seven gold. That seems like an okay deal. In fact I should actually go through and get open borders with everyone on the map for the purpose of potentially making a little bit of cash out of it because usually the AI will give you a very small token amount of gold for this and more importantly it'll also improve your relations with that AI. Like for example I'm picking up about 16 gold. Now sometimes I am having to be the one who gives gold but for example here I got one gold per turn and five gold like that's worth it for just giving open borders that's a definite worth of thing that you want to do. So I'd love to get more settlers but I think in this particular instance I'm going to actually chop out the lighthouse to try and get that faster for the purpose of getting another trade route in here. Hey, I found the Sahara El Beta. Very cool. That's over in Vancouver of all places. <laughs> uh, not sure if Vancouver is very close to the Sahara, but I'll take it. This does mean that my scout got a level up. I'll take the faster movement in woods and rainforest promotion. Now I'm going to pop a mine down on Buddha. That'll give this tile back its production. I'm also tempted to put a second uh, thing into Magnus at this point, because I do see quite a few cities that I could settle throughout the continents and um, there's quite a few up here for example there's at least one over here there's one over here one over here potentially even two over here and I do want to settle these tundra islands because they tend to have late game strategics which can fuel my sort of navy and air force so that's something I'm definitely definitely considering so at this point I think I will go ahead and take the provision promotion on Magnus so I can start produ mass producing units there is bronze working allowing me to chop Thing, jungle and reveal iron so there is a copy of iron over there I'm tempted to purchase it to make sure that I get it and then I'll use this build charge to go and prove that because then I can start selling it to the AI and in fact once I have about 20 horses I'll sell them to the AI because 12 horses for example if we look here is worth about two gold per turn I want to have at least a 20 stack to sell I want to get over here to universities as fast as I can so I'm going to head up towards currency for now I'm going to take free inquiry again this era. We only got a normal age, but that's fine. I'm going to take free inquiry again because there's a chance that I might build a campus or two. And also Eureka's are pretty easy to get. For example, I could pick up a water mill, uh, which is something I might actually do ahead of currency because that's worth a Eureka. And building the iron mine will get me a Eureka. I could also build ancient walls. So these are all things that I can do purely from the perspective of getting uh, cultural boosts or, 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 or sorry, uh, scientific boosts. So I'll probably buy myself another builder and then pop down a quarry somewhere. Now I will probably eventually harvest that, but for now I'll let it be live on as a quarry just to get the boost. I'm going to say I want city state types of industrial zones to have better yields. And I will say that producing units with production will be 50% cheaper. Okay, it looks like they went with faith. Uh, usually the AI will go with faith. Some people go with production. If I had maybe plugged in a couple of extra points, it would have been just fine. But now that we're in the next era, let's go ahead and have a look at what people will pay for the silver. Only three gold in there. Six gold from Korea, eight gold from the Maori, and six gold from America. Let's sell this to the Maori. The Maori are giving me the best deal for my silver. Eight gold per turn is a very nice amount. Let's also have a look and see who wants to buy my diplomatic favor for a reasonable price. So America is paying slightly above rate. That means they're paying more gold than diplomatic favor. Coupe is playing under, uh, paying under rates at about 60%. So we're not going to be trading with him. I think they can go up to as high as paying 50% uh, over the normal diplomatic value uh, ratio. So we'll see. Yeah, look, Canada is up to 24 gold per turn for this Diplo favor. So it's likely that Canada is going to be the one who we sell our Diplo favor to. Korea is only paying nine. So let's sell our diplomatic favor to Canada. 
We'll sell all 23. We'll take as much money from him as we can. 28 gold per turn. That's basically as much gold as I was making per turn up until recently. So if I swing in over here and just click on a tile to update my gold income, I'm now making 70 gold per turn, which is a crazy amount of gold. We produced a settler in Pex. So I'm going to send that or our Pest. I'm going to send that over to this city here. I'm going to settle that. And then we'll look into settling some of these other cities over the next few turns as well. Looks like I'm going to pick up another tribal village too, which I'm excited about. And uh, since I've decided that there's an awful lot of settling that's going to be going on in this game, I will, of course, be going for the Ancestral Hall to get the extra settler, uh, get the extra builder when you produce a settler. Harbour completed in Sazid. I think I'm going to go for the Lighthouse again. Again, I'm going for a very heavy gold purchasing strategy here since it's a naval game and that's kind of what works in a naval game so i think i'm going to go heavily into gold purchasing because you can get really really powerful amounts of gold there's a boost for iron working which gives me also the boost for apprenticeship which is worth two era score it'll also potentially allow me to produce a unit out of that i also want to pick up horseback riding and swordsman so that i can build one of each of those to get the era score from those although i might be completely wrong about how that works I have to double check. Lighthouse completed in the capital. I'm going to go ahead and purchase myself a trader. The earlier I get these traders, the faster they pay themselves off. I would love to get to work on settlers. I think I don't need to get a granary right now because the city has okay growth. It would grow 50% faster with the granary, however, and it's only a five turn investment, so I will go for that. Okay, looks like there's a slinger here, but I'm gonna go grab that. Plus one population, not what we were hoping for, but we'll take it. This poor warrior is getting absolutely dumped on. He probably will die in the water, but that's okay. He did his job. He picked up a tr couple tribal villages for me. Hey, we ran into Mohenjo Daro. Very cool. I got to put one envoy into Mohenjo Daro so that I can get that plus two culture per turn. Now, trade route wise, Bandar Brunei is worth 12 gold to trade with. I'm curious if I could trade from Pest, it might be worth more. Let's move this trader over to Pest and see if maybe we can trade through Buddha and Brussels into Bandar Brunei. Poor little warrior did in fact die. We can now build water mills and we're gonna to wanna to build those in the capital as well. I'm delaying settlers slightly just to get this uh, food growth because if I can grow my capital quickly, it'll pay itself off uh, over the long run. Okay, we have the wheel. I wanna get masonry, but I wanna build a quarry first because I wanna build ancient walls and I also wanna build an aqueduct to get all these boosts. So right now my current goal is to just get as many boosts as possible to get as much error score as possible, as well as just efficiently navigating my way through the scientific tech tree. Let's organize this by gold and we'll have a look. So there's 12 gold for a card actually. So I think I would like to trade with a card because that is 12. Now it's kind of a dangerous trade route, however, but it would also give me an envoy with them. I'll take that risk and hope that it works out for me. A plus one envoy with a card is very nice. If I can get them to level three, I'll start to get more diplomatic favor. Great admiral, encampment, great rider, and holy sight. I could do some of those, no problem. I'm not sure if I will. The great admiral is a definite thing, I, I would imagine. Hello, Norway, another competitor on a naval map. And Sweden, we also ran into Sweden, that's cool. A lot of AIs on this map. We also ran into Babylon, I'm gonna put one envoy into Babylon. Although the plus one envoy into Akkad here is worth an awful lot because it will give me plus one diplomatic favor per turn, which in turn will be worth plus one, uh, quite a bit of gold if I can trade it to the AI. Let's go ahead and settle this city right here. This is Miskolk. This city is going to need quite a bit of work. I'm gonna go granary into monument and just leave it here for now. Let's grab ourselves a builder in the capital because we wanna go ahead and improve, we wanna, uh, build the quarry here and then improve maybe a couple more of these mine tiles. Trader over here in Sazid. I could trade with Bandar Brunei. That would be another 12 gold per turn. I could also trade with Canada and get myself some science and production. I don't hate this trade route. I don't hate this trade route and I think I might take it. No, the gold, the gold is just worth so much more. I'm going to trade with Bandar Brunei. I need another galley to get down here to explore around Bandar Brunei as well. There's currency as a technology that we have unlocked. I'm going to make my way towards mathematics because we want to get education as soon as possible. Let's talk about earning a great scientist. I think we are going to want to get Isaac Newton. Uh, Korea is pushing hard for that though. Korea is going to be a big problem this game. I kind of hate playing against Korea. I don't think it's fun to play against Korea. I kind of wish I could maybe get a mod to ban her from showing up because she just creates so much pressure on the game that you have to like go hard. Um, and if you don't live near here, you, you kind of have to go hard for a thing yourself. So I'm going to go for open borders with this lady and take her money for the horses here. Deal. I'm sure that I can catch up with Korea. It's just annoying. There goes defensive tactics. Let's get to work on feudalism, which will give us plus two builder charges. That's exactly what we want. I'm also going to promote Pingala with the plus one science per turn. I completely forgot to assign him to his city. Um, if I'm going to assign him anywhere. 
I'll put them in packs for now. Hello, Alexander, as well in this game. Excellent. Well, I will be talking to you and getting some open borders with you on this turn because you are surely uh, going to be a friendly, friendly person that I want to have good relations with. Let us place the quarry on this tile. That'll give me the boost for masonry, which is worth plus one error score. Excellent. I want to get started on some campuses soon, but I need to get all these sort of basic things built. I think I'm going to go harbors first for gold and then sort of transition from there. City state emergency. Okay. Looks like uh, Coupe got uh, dunked on in this <laughs> election. Considering he started off in the snow, I feel pretty bad for him. Lighthouse completed here in Sazed. Let's get ourselves another trader over here in Miskolk. Now that we have the uh, harbor in here, I'd like to get myself a campus. I think I might use it in conjunction with this harbor to get a very small amount of adjacency. So I'll put it right there and we'll get to work on that. And that's basically the plan is to just go like harbor into campus, the harbor for the gold and then the campus for the uh, science and then use all of my gold to purchase builders to uh, get things going. I'm kind of tempted to put like a farm triangle on this tile. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a dam here right here on this tile and then I'll put some farm triangles. So I think that will prompt me to grab another builder and get those farm triangles going. I'm going to want another builder after that to build another farm triangle. So I'm going to want to identify somewhere else that a farm triangle wants to go because I want to get the plus six farm boost here. In fact, it might even just be um, unfeasible. I'll need two builders in pecs, I think to get another farm triangle in right here. It'll take some time, but we'll get through it. Diplomatic favor for silk. I'm going to refuse that deal. Not really interested in that. You want to also buy my diplo favor. I'm going to refuse that deal. I can get a better deal selling my diplo favor to um, thing. Looks like somebody took the suzerainty of a card. She put eight envoys in there just to cuck me out of a card. That feels pretty bad. Right, farm right there. We're also going to want to start purchasing new Builders over here in Pex. I shall wait a couple of turns until I have enough gold for that. All right, we have another trade route over here in Miskolk. I'm going to trade with Bandar Brunei for the extra 12 gold, making incredible amounts of gold considering the uh, era of the game. Looks like another uh, person just got murdered. Construction has advanced. We got the water mill. So in the capital now, I'm okay with building settlers because the city grows relatively quickly because it has all the good stuff that allows it to grow very quickly. There is the adaptive people. There's some error score as well as getting the boost for irrigation. That's actually two error score. And I'm going to put another farm on this rice and then we'll get to work on a dam in the not too distant future. It is something that we want to work on. I think there is an argument to be made for going for something like the lighthouse or the Colossus. The extra trade route from the Colossus. It would take a very long time to build. I could also build the mausoleum, but I would have to give up a tile that I don't want to give up. So I could either put 11 turns into a builder or 27 turns into a Colossus for a mon for a trade route. I think it's, or, or not a builder, sorry, a Settlers. I think it's got to be Settlers here for now, for the foreseeable future. Even if this isn't the place that I really ideally want to be building them, eventually I would like to be building them in Pex. I'd like to swap these two um, governors and build them in Pex. But Pex needs to be built up a little bit before it can manage that because it only has eight production, whereas my capital has 15. Almost twice the production or, well roughly twice the production right let's go ahead and pop a mine in here on this copper that'll give it plus one production as well we'll cross the river with you next turn there is mathematics we can build the petra if we want let's go ahead and purchase ourselves a builder in pex i'm going to want one more of these to start clearing out this terrain we have one build charge here and i'd like to get this um amber online because it's going to give me uh, food and production in pex as well as just having another luxury that I can sell to the AI to maximize my gold income. There's Nan Madal, very cool. That's gonna be an important one to have control over in the long run during this game. Pop another farm down here. We got our very first farm triangle online. However, it's not fully online because we haven't completed feudalism. Let's go ahead and chop here. That'll finish the ancestral hall a little bit quicker and we'll be able to purchase ourselves a builder in a little bit as well. Now that we have finished the ancestral hall, I'm going to place the harbor because it's a plus four harbor and I wanna have that placed. But I'm going, yeah, you know what? I'm going to work on the harbor. I think working on the harbor is the right move here. We want to get those trade routes online and all that good stuff. You're going to step in there and chop that to get that done faster. And then I will buy another builder next turn. Let's go ahead and promote Pingala with the connoisseur promotion. That'll give us another little bit of culture and science to help us catch up with the AI that we've fallen a little bit behind. Normally you want to be done settling around turn 100, but this is going to be a very different game, I think. Too bad I haven't actually found Korea because I would love to be able to go to war with her at some point. Now we have this Amber online. That's another strategic resource that we can sell off. Let's see who wants to buy it. Problem with in a game like this is there's so many... Uh, he already has Amber. There's so many players in the list that it's hard to like 
pick and choose who you want to sell a particular resource to. Norway will pay seven. Teddy will pay 10. So Teddy is the current winner. All right, looks like Teddy is the one that I want to give this Amber to. There you go, Teddy. Thank you very much. That's an extra 10 gold per turn. Let's hit up Canada and sell off our Diplo favor as well, just to get a little bit of extra cash out of him. Oh, you know what? I have some iron here. I wonder how much he would be willing to spend on iron. Four gold per turn. I'll take that deal. And I'll also even throw in some horses at four gold per turn. He'll only give me 15 for that. So clearly he doesn't value those very highly. However, 15 Diplo favor, he will give me 18 gold, which is a decent deal. Coupe, on the other hand, doesn't have any horses, so he's likely to give me a great deal on this. Four gold per turn, excellent. That's another little chunk of cash in the bank. You see, we're already up to making 140 gold per turn, or thereabouts. Let's grab ourselves the second builder in here. There's Mason Meat. We're going to want to build ancient walls somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. We'll place a farm there. We'll go here and get that chopped next turn. I want to pick up Apprenticeship to make my mines better. Um... And it'll also move me towards education. So I'm going to pick up Apprenticeship. Sweet. So Pest has finished building its monument and all that sort of stuff. We're going to get to work on a harbor in here. Eventually, we're going to want a lot of different builder charges in here to improve this city. But for now, it's working away nicely. I am going to want another district in here. And I think uh, we'll be placing that after we get builders. Once we have feudalism, we'll be going crazy on purchasing builders with all this gold that we have. It would probably be a good idea to pick up Liang as well to have a centralized place to purchase builders out of to get slightly more efficiency out of the money that we're spending. Let's go ahead and chop here. That'll give me the boost for Hungary. We'll also place a farm right there. And we'll move our way down the coastline. Your delegation is most welcome. Goodbye. Ah, sweet. So we found another city-state. It is Palenque and Babylon. So having all of these... Oh, wow. There's a lot of really nice city-states on this map so far. This is going to be a fun game, as far as I can tell. We'll place down the next farm. We'll get feudalism instantaneously. And all of these farms are now much higher value as well, which is really, really important. Um, and now this city has not only a lot of room to grow, but it also has a lot of gold production and food and all that sort of jazz. Let's go ahead and pop in here. We're going to be taking out conscription now. It's not Conscription just isn't that much gold for us right now. I'd love to put in inspiration, but I think the best thing to do is to put plug in serfdom. And now we can start purchasing, uh, mass purchasing builders. The real question is, where do I get my next governor title? I think it's that recorded history and... I am building a campus, so I will get the boost towards that. I won't get the boost towards drama and poetry, but that's fine. And do I want to wait for Liang? I think I'm going to purchase... I'm going to purchase right now and skip waiting for Liang. I'm going to get a builder in Pest because there's a few tiles in here that need to be improved. And that's a five charge builder. And now that I have the feudalism card, I think it's worth it to start getting builders out who will be able to occupy and build up all of these cities. Sorry, not builders, settlers. There is horseback riding with stable and horsemen. You know what I actually need to build too? I need to find somewhere to build ancient walls. And it might be over here in this city over in Pex because I want to get the boost for engineering and I'm also going to want to build an aqueduct at some point. There's the Colosseum. Well, we found Korea and she's quite far away. However, not too far away that a late game naval invasion would uh, be completely unfeasible. Let's get this boat online as well. Now we've got two very nice coastal fishing boat tiles, which are giving us food. But more importantly, it's also giving us production, culture and gold, as, as well as the little chunk of housing is going a far, a, a quite a long way in keeping the city growing. Your delegation is most welcome. Thank you very much. People are happy with how much money I'm making. I'm very happy with how much money I'm making. There's the boost towards recorded history because we finished the campus over here. Let's get the library in Sazid now. And then we'll get the ancient walls in this city. And so if I'm getting the ancient walls in Sazid, I don't need to get them in Pex. Now that we have both of these fishing boat tiles online, I think I'd like to harvest this forest here because I want to put a campus there. Excellent. There is a plus four adjacency harbor, bringing us up to 45 out of 54 uh Watch columns. We're going to work on this to get another trade route. This city is now finished. We're going to place the harbor and we'll also place the campus to lock in that price. But I think I'm going to work on the pyramids in here because if I can get the pyramids, that'll make all of my builders in future way more production efficient. And I think with that in mind, I'm going to get a builder in here to try to improve this city just to make it slightly more, you know, uh, efficient at building the pyramids. If I can shave a few turns off the pyramids, that's a big deal. Okay, Korea wants to buy some iron off me and she's offering me silk. I will, you know what, I'll take that silk. It's, it's 30 turns of having slightly less amenity or slightly better amenities. And amenities are a bit of a problem for me right now because I basically have none. And by getting that, it's made a lot of my cities happier, which means all of my yields are higher. Let's improve that fishing boat right there. That'll give the city not only some extra food, but also some extra production. 
I think I'm also going to want to pick up irrigation here just really quick before apprenticeship because I want to be able to improve this plantation. Let's harvest this forest. That'll chop that. And then I'll place the campus like so. And then cancel it. I'm placing it so that I lock in the price so that it doesn't grow in price. Because every time you research a technology, uh, buildings uh, or sorry, uh, districts go up in price to construct. Let's send a settler over here to this island. It would be very nice if we had a unit to escort. So I'm probably going to just send him over to this city and then purchase a galley or something in there. I'd love to be building. Now, the question is, do any of these districts do anything for me? And sure enough, some of them would do something for me, like, but for now, like the harbor and the campus is basically all that I need until I have the industrial zone. And then I'm going to want some industrial zones to sprinkle throughout my empire. So for now, I'm just going to keep building settlers in the capital while it grows and, uh, you know, just keep going from there. There's an argument to be made for working the um, campus projects to get extra great scientists, but I think if I can just get extra scientists out, it'll kind of pay itself off in the very, very long run. Now, there's an open question as to whether I want to keep this cattle tile or if I want to uh, improve it or if I want to harvest it. And I think I don't really see anything else that I can place here that's much better. And this will give it plus one production and half a housing, which when combined with this coffee tile will give this city an extra full housing, which means it has plus two housing over its normal self. And it'll also just make it so that it gets a little bit more food in production, which I think is a totally fine thing. And it's not like this is a hill that I can put a mine on or anything, right? I'm only gaining by improving this. There's irrigation like I was hoping for. I should be able to improve these sorts of things. I'm not going to harvest the rainforest because that's giving that tile plus one food. Normally I would harvest rainforest tiles on uh, resource tiles, but this city is just so starved for tile yields that I think I'm going to have to um, just improve that. Normally I would plug in campus adjacency bonuses if I was doing some sort of science game. However, this particular game, not really what I can do. Um, let's go ahead and grab Li Yang. I'm going to appoint her in Estergom because Estergom is pretty central. And then I can use this to purchase builders to send out and improve the rest of my cities. But yeah, my, my, my current like campus adjacency is pretty low. So I'm going to skip out on doing anything with regards to that. Na now, naval tradition, on the other hand, would be really, really nice. If I could plug in naval infrastructure early, that would be an awful lot of gold. But it's probably something I don't want to plug in, plug in until I've picked up exploration. And so I'm going to rush exploration, basically, at this point. We have another envoy, and I'm not sure where I want to send him. I think I'd like to just pick up a little bit of extra science or something like that. The culture is nice, so I think out of all of these guys, I think Bologna would be the best to have suzerainty of. So I'll just place one envoy in there and kind of fire and forget. Now you could make the argument about plugging in the um, plus two. You know, I should have plugged in the Diplomatic League. But yeah, it probably would have been better to do that. But it's like, I'm pretty forgetful on that front. So no, it's one. I think it's one of the areas that I could genuinely improve my gameplay is switch, switching out my government cards. Something I've always been very, very bad at. Looks like the military emergency against Korea failed. And we just got the new era by, by completing apprenticeship. We now have access to the uh, plus one mine as well as the industrial zone. So that's going to maybe change our plans in some of these cities. Industrial zones are going to be important. I, I am going to want this dam eventually. I'm going to want this. I want to get lumber mills if I can, because that'll give me the boost for mass production. Let's work on lumber mills. Hey, we got a great, uh, great admiral and it is a Zeng He. I'll take Zeng He. Did anyone build a mausoleum? I'm kind of tempted to build this mausoleum. I'll think about it after this settler, but for now, I'm going to just, I'm going to hold on to this guy until, until I decide if I'm going to build a mausoleum or not. Another plantation down here in Pest, bringing it up to seven total population maximum. The city is now generating a great amount of food, production, gold, and all that other great stuff that any city wants to produce. Thanks for all those nice tile improvements. Let's go ahead and talk to the AI and get some open borders again. Canada would like open borders. Thank you. You give me five gold. I think America would also like open borders too. get a tiny bit of cash. It's always worth it to just kind of make sure you're you're you have open borders with everyone. Norway, for example, could use open borders. That'll give me a little bit of a boost with him. Korea open borders. She'll make me pay her, but that's fine. Already have open borders with Alexander. What about Coupe? Coupe open borders. Just go through and do your open borders with the AIs every 30 turns or so. And it'll it'll net you a very small amount of gold. Now we have a thousand gold in the bank. And if I had enough, I would totally buy Isidore so that I could rush out one of those um one of those wonders, but I don't quite have enough money in the bank. But a thousand gold in the bank is a lot. And in fact, it's enough to buy a settler, which I will do. Because I have nothing else I can immediately spend my gold also. So if I just buy a builder, that'll sort of accelerate my empire's uh, production and growth. Oh, I was going to buy a boat here, but I forgot. So now I'm just going to send this settler out on its own. I would really like to pick up... I would really like to pick up... I can't remember what it is, but one of these one of these things gives you plus one movement for embarked units. And that's pretty important. Um, once I have construction, I'm going to head for education. Then I'm going to send this builder over here to this city to get this lumber mill improved. This settler is going to head over to this desert city. It's not a great city. 
but it is a city and that is important that you make as many cities as you can. Let's have a little peek around or any tiles that I could improve that aren't improved right now inside my empire. Uh, mainly just this hill right here. So if I send you to do this hill and then you go to this lumber mill, I think that works out a little bit better. Okay, harbor is completed over here in Pest. Let's work on the lighthouse again for trade routes. We want as much gold per turn as possible because that allows me to accelerate in an incredibly powerful way. We have another envoy in here. I'm going to plug this particular envoy into Nan Madal because I would like suzerainty of Nan Madal. Should have plugged in that card again. Completely just always forgetting. Almost probably would be better to have that card just plugged in permanently, honestly. Um, yeah, you know what? Probably would be. But let's go ahead and just... I'll take this trade. It's an extra luxury that I don't have access to that'll help my empire out over the next few turns. It'll keep it happy. I'm going to say 100% production towards buildings inside of the harbor would be good or the industrial zone. I'm going to just vote one point into this and then I'll say I'll vote for myself twice on this. So yeah, city center and vote for myself. Looks like the city center passed and mine, uh, my boost passed. That means I'm going to have much faster border growth as my districts finish. Although, you know, the, the funny thing is right now in this immediate moment, I'm not building districts. So I'd love to build the mausoleum of Halicarnassus over here. It would be a huge feather in my cap. And I think this is the place to build it if I get my hands on a builder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I should really purchase the builder over here, but I don't want to wait around for the builder to walk all the way over. So just in this particular instance, I'm going to purchase the builder and then do production saving for the mausoleum because I want to chop this tile, which is where I want to place it. I want to chop this tile and then place the mausoleum. Let's put a mine down here in Buddha and in one... Oh, there we go. We can actually place the lumber mill this turn. So this city has like a crazy good production line. It's up to 23 production per turn, which is really, really powerful. Saves it again. Production saving trick. Ba -bum. I have one build charge left on this builder. Let's go ahead and get that ivory online. So you can see in here, the mausoleum will take 24 turns. I come in here. I harvest this tile and now the mausoleum will take 21 turns. I can place it right there and that way I don't waste the forest that was underneath this and now I can start uh, improving some of these other tiles. For example, I might put a lumber mill here. I might chop and put a mine right there. The city is going to have a hard time feeding itself so I do need to be careful about what exactly I chop and change but I think it'll be fine if I do lumber mill. It might even be better just to chop and put mines here and here and then leave it otherwise fine the way it is. Lighthouse completed in PEX which means a trader is on the cards. Let's get ourselves a trader right there. And over here, I'm going to get to work on the campus, which is a plus two campus, although I will kill a farm triangle here. I can restore that farm triangle in a couple of turns up here. I don't think the plus one science here is worth that much, but this hill is worth a lot. So I'm going to take the plus one science over the over killing the hill because a, a hill is very, very valuable. And Mistalk has finished its granary and uh, thingy. So I'm going to place its harbor. There's a plus three harbor right here. So I'll place that one. And it'll just get to work on that and that'll get us even more gold. We're settling another city right here on the cattle. Ideally, is this where I want to settle this city? Yeah, I think this is fine. I think I'm going to settle right here on this cattle. That'll give the city plus one base gold. And I'm kind of tempted to put a farm triangle in here. But I don't think that's the right move for a number of reasons. I think what I'm going to do is put a harbor right here. Cancel that harbor. Go granary monument to get the city growing and spreading its influence. And then I'm going to put a lumber mill on this tile to give it a productive tile to help it catch up with my other tiles. Or my other cities rather. Another settler finished here in Buda. And I think there's a great city over here that has a great coastal bias. Now there's a question of, do I want to build myself an industrial zone around here? I think I would really like to build an industrial zone in particular because there's some really good adjacency available, but I want to kind of like make sure that I'm hitting as many of my cities as possible. So currently my thought is if I place my industrial zone right here on this tile, it'll hit basically every city in my empire with the um, adjacency. Uh, the problem is it will miss out on Sazed. That'll be the city that it misses. If I put this industrial zone right here, it'll miss Sazed. But if I move it up a tile this way, it'll miss out on some adjacency from like this. But if I put another mine here, it'll get a bit of adjacency. Whereas if I place it right here, um, if I place it right here, it would get adjacency from these things. If I place it right here, it would get adjacency from this. And then I could maybe place another district next to it. So I think I'm going to place it on this tile because this should hit every single city on this island. It hits Pest, and it hits Sazed, and it hits Missalk. So it hits every city on this island is hit by this industrial zone. So I'm only going to need one industrial zone to cover this entire island. I'm still going to build this dam because I don't want this to flood, and it's also worth a lot of housing and stuff like that. But I was mainly building the dam for the convenience of having a really high... Um, a really high adjacency on my thing, on my industrial zone. That's the word I was looking for. I could get friendships and alliances with these people in order to pick up some stuff, but I would have to kind of bill away from going for exploration and then swing back for civil service. So I'm going to skip out on that for now. Let's put the cap down on this tile. Excellent. 
and we'll chop this tile to get the mausoleum faster and then we'll replace this with a mine. I'm going to spend a little bit of my gold to buy this tile because the city needs a good productive tile to help it catch up. That plus three production might not seem like a big deal, but that means the city is now growing and producing very, very quickly relative to a normal starter city. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in Merchant Confederation over Charismatic Leader because I'm trying to produce as much gold as possible. Remember, I need all of the gold in the world. So we're up to 150 gold per turn, which is really, really healthy amount. Now, I think I'm going to pick up um, Reina here because she's going to make my international trade routes better. And I think I'm going to place her in... Uh, S, no, sorry, Pest, I think, because Pest is a pretty good spot for international trade because it can kind of hit a lot of different players. I definitely need to get my hands on another galley. How much is a galley to purchase? They're only 260, so I, I need to do a little bit of exploration down over here in the southeast. Pop a mine over here in Sazed. That'll give me another productive tile to start uh, producing the mausoleum. I really would like to finish that mausoleum. We'll also place a city down here on Antarctica, which is kind of funny because this is a desert, although I believe technically Antarctica is actually a desert. That's something that maybe not a lot of people would realize. I'm going to go ahead and improve that tile to uh, get the city growing. And we'll do the usual stuff, right? We'll go Granary Monument, right? And that'll get the city growing and get the borders popping. I've got four build charges up here. I am I'm still super tempted to do a farm triangle in here. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have you hang out until the city grows and then I'll kind of decide what to do with you. Okay, let's see. We'll trade in some iron and open borders for a little bit of gold. Sounds good to me. Here's the Withering Drought. Uh, not too bad. It did erase one of my farms. It kind of sucks that a drought can happen here. I'm kind of surprised that like the drought managed to go all the way up through here as well. That's very strange. All right, fishing boats have been placed. Now the question is, I think this one is actually better because the city will grow slightly faster. Whereas this one just lets the borders grow faster. All right, the reason I couldn't get down here is because I never got Suzerainty of Brussels. So I'm going to have to try and figure out a way around. The city has reached 10 population. I think that was my capital. That'll give me a little bit of error score. So we do have another Golden Age on the way, which is going to be a very big deal. Chop here again. There's the mausoleum in six turns. Very nice. And so by carefully manipulating all of the things that I could, I have managed to garner myself a Golden Age. Now, monumentality would be huge for me here because I am planning on building an awful lot of builders and I don't have a lot of faith, but I will be getting a gold purchase. They'll be 30% cheaper to purchase with gold as well. And that's what I'm using to purchase most of my builders. On the other hand, I could get reform the coinage and just get a lot more gold. However, in this current era, almost all of my gold is going towards builder production, but not anymore, however, because most of my builders are going to be coming from the fact that I'm settling cities. And a lot of these cities are already like improved to the point where it's not really necessary to get another builder. I mean, I guess you could make an argument for a builder in Misalk or Sazed. Yeah, I'm really not sure. I think I think it might be better just to go for reform the coinage or Hicksunt Dracones for the extra three population for cities settled on a different continent. As well as the extra movement. Yeah, I'm going to go. This is actually one of the very, very few times where Hicksunt Dracones is like the right move. Now, in terms of my capital, I'm going to be saving up money to purchase the university in here because I want this thing to continue to produce settlers once this industrial zone is built. We're also going to get to work on at least placing the dam so that we can get to work on advancing up through the tech tree as well. Although, can I unlock mass production right now? It would take three tech. So I'll go for buttresses into military tactics into mass production and then that'll let me build shipyards. And then it might even be time to do an analysis if uh, a naval war is even like, you know, a thing that we might want to do against someone here. I'm not seeing like a huge potential for a naval war, maybe on Canada. So I think it might be better just to kind of mind our own business. Korea is up to 161 sides per turn, by the way, which is kind of stupid. This is kind of why I don't like Korea in the game. Um, she just kind of really imbalances the science game. She's already 33 technologies researched. I've got 19 on 46 science per turn. And I've been playing, you know, I would say arguably pretty efficiently. Industrial zone completed in Buddha. I'm going to be purchasing the university and the workshop. I also want an entertainment district in here at some point. And I think it would be good to place it somewhere where I won't be getting a lumber mill or anything like that. This city will be getting a mine here. So I think I'll put it on this pasture tile and we'll get to work on that. But for now, the big thing that I want to work on in here is settlers. Of course, I want to get as many settlers out as possible. Ah, Korea settled over here. That's incredibly aggravating, especially since she settled in a way that makes it really difficult for anyone else to settle nearby. That is an incredibly greedy settle. And I'm very surprised that she settled all the way over here when there's plenty of open land in between her and where she settled. I guess she just saw this as like high value land. So I'm going to be starting to centralize um, all of my trade routes in uh, in. Buddha, I think, and sending them through Pest, if possible. Let's go ahead and found a city right here. One of these tiles I'm going to get rid of. 
And I think the one to get rid of is this tile right here. So I'm just going to production save for a turn. And I'm going to put a camp. Now, where's my, I think my harbor is going here. So my campus is going there. That's fine. So I'm going to harvest this for 79 production. I'm going to place the campus right there. And since the city is already four population, I can place a plus four harbor as well. But I'll cancel all those and then just work on the... Oh, shoot. I harvested, so I have a bunch of production overflow. Well, I guess getting the granary straight away isn't like a terrible idea. So again, I want my trade routes to go through... Um, go through the city that Reina is in. So, for example, if I want to trade with Washington, I want it to go through Pest. And Washington is a pretty good city to trade with here. We'll get a bit of science, culture, and faith from it. Mm. There is the Mausoleum of Halakarnassus. That is a big deal because the Mausoleum of Halakarnassus applies retroactively. We just picked up mercenaries. We're working on exploration. I wish I was able to build the two caravels for that. But more importantly, we've got a few things to take care of. First of all, let's go ahead and place the dam in this city, which is going to allow it to keep growing. Oh, I messed this up, didn't I? I always mess this up, don't I? Well, you know what? Screw this rice tile. I'll put a farm here later. First of all, let's go ahead. I was going to purchase myself the university, but I think purchasing the workshop might be a better move. I think the university gives me housing too, so I'm going to pick up the university and then I'll get the workshop in the next few turns. And then I'll get a builder to improve this. The other thing that I wanted to do... What the hell was it that I wanted to do? Shoot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. I completely forgot what I was going to do. Damn it. Well, campus is finished over here in Pex. Let's get to work on the library over here in... Saves it, we finished the mausoleum. Oh, right, I remember now. It was the Admiral. So by saving this Admiral, we now get two charges of him and essentially get two uh, envoys out of him because this is retroactive. We also get to pick up a very nice uh, 75 gold. The lighthouse is completed here in Pest. Let's go ahead and purchase... Uh, let's go to work on a campus. I normally wouldn't spend my gold in this way when I'm saving up for a workshop. But I'm going to purchase the trader in here because the earlier I get these traders online, the faster they pay themselves off. So it's important to get those online as soon as possible. We've got two envoys here. I think I can get Suze Ranidi and Nan Madal, which is a lot of culture, so I'm going to take that. That gave me 30 culture from Nan Madal, which is amazing. So even if I only hold Nan Madal for a few turns, that was worth it. Plus, don't forget, by sending those envoys there, I'm getting gold from it. Thanks to the card that I have running in my government. And there is the pyramids. We gain ourselves a free builder, and all of my builders get plus one charge. Brilliant. We've made some really, really good wonder acquisitions. Like, getting the... Um, pyramids and the mausoleum is actually something I really wasn't expecting and I'm very happy that I did get them but I tell you what on the note of getting the pyramids and the mausoleum done I'm going to call that the end of the episode I want to thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you guys are enjoying this series please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time bye bye